I guess the very simplistic way to understand or explain Islam is they believe in the Bible. They believe in all of it. They just wrote one more book afterwards by one more messenger, Muhammad, peace be upon him. And in his book, he said, Christians are right. Everything's right. But there's also this part. Islam believes in everything the Bible says. No, it doesn't. Islam says that the Bible is corrupted. Islam says that the Bible has many mistakes and errors and blasphemous statements and corrects many of those throughout the Quran. Today's episode, which is kind of unfortunate, but also at the same time, absolutely necessary, we have to talk about Andrew Tate, someone that I have neglected to really speak about for a variety of reasons for quite a long time. However, unfortunately, he himself has made headlines by spewing kufr. What is kufr? Disbelief. He's going around spewing statements of kufr, spewing statements of disbelief. Now, why is this so problematic? It's not just because he claims to be a Muslim, but because he has so many people following him. So many of the youth who may be attracted to what he says and the way he thinks and the way he acts. And so this is extremely dangerous when someone of his so-called status or stature or popularity is going around spewing such dangerous statements of kufr. Now, I'm not somebody that's happy to make this video. I don't look forward to making this type of video when I wake up in the morning. But unfortunately, Andrew Tate is someone I've neglected to speak about for a long time, for, as I said, a variety of reasons, but he's reached beyond that threshold. I can no longer be quiet. I can no longer choose not to speak about him in the manner in which I'm going to. So what is this recent statement he made? And is it an anomaly? Is this something that we can excuse him for? Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. This is a recent tweet from Andrew Tate. And this was from just this year, June 7th, 2024. He says this, and I quote, say it again. He's replying to a tweet where somebody is saying uh, something about Andrew Tate and the Fourth Reich and all this nonsense. He says, say it again without the effort. Say it properly with re respect. What does he want you to say properly with respect, Andrew Tate? I am your Lord. Then I will demand hands, hands your coin, bow to me. So this is Andrew Tate, just in June of 2024, proclaiming proudly on his Twitter platform, which he has several million followers, almost 10 million followers, I believe, and people watching him on all platforms all over, is telling people to proclaim proudly what? That Andrew Tate is their Lord. He's their Rabb. He's their God. And he's telling people to bow down to him. Now people say, hold on a second, Jake. Maybe you're being too, you know, you're being too uh, cute here. You're being too particular. You're worrying too much about this. Maybe he doesn't really mean it that way. He's being hyperbolic. We can make all sorts of excuses for the guy. The fact of the matter is, how long has he been Muslim now? People say, oh, wait, Jake, give him a break. He was in the hole. He was in, uh, he's been going through a lot with this court case. He was in prison. He hasn't had time to actually properly learn Islam and sit and be around Muslims and scholars, even though it seems like he's really making no effort to do so. Nevertheless, at what point do we stop making an excuse for him? Just because the guy was in prison? Just because he's going through some hardships? And I'm not saying he's guilty or not. I don't really know. And that's not none of my business. The fact of the matter is this, that he is going on a public platform now telling people that he is God, saying that I am your Rabb, I am your Lord, and is telling people to bow down to him. Now, even if we pressed him and said, come on, Andrew, you don't really believe you're God in the flesh, right? You don't really believe what these statements implied. That doesn't matter. The statement itself is a kufri statement. It's a statement of disbelief. And this isn't the first time he said it. He's had other people throughout the years, even after he became Muslim, where they were calling him, uh, they were calling Tate their Lord and Savior. And he would retweet those things. So this has been going on for how long now? He's retweeting people calling him Lord and Savior. Then he is openly from his own uh, tweet 
saying that he is the Lord and asking people to bow down to him. Now, I wish that were just the case, even though it's not. There are plenty of other things that we can pick on. Nevertheless, this is a kufri statement. What about the people who are going to go around the youth and start thinking, oh, it's cool to just go and yeah, say, yeah, I'm your God, I'm your Lord. When the Quran says, what? Doesn't he know? Doesn't he pray five times a day or even once? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The Rabb of the universe is only one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not Andrew Tate, not any Tom, Dick, and Harry off the street, nobody else. So it's extremely dangerous for this guy to run around spewing these kufri statements, and then the youths go around and thinking, oh, it's cool to just say, I am your Rabb. When this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is what he told Musa alayhi salam, I am your Lord, right? That's the one we worship. Not Andrew Tate or any of these other people walking around. It doesn't matter how many followers you have. It doesn't how much, matter how much money or cachet you think you have. There comes a point in time when every man must be held accountable and they must be corrected publicly because he's saying these things publicly. So if anybody has a problem with it, I'm sorry, I don't care. He's reached beyond the point. People need to call out what he's saying. Now, I wish that were the only thing that I had to take a look at, but there's also been a recent interview that he has had with ex-mobster Michael Francis, who is somebody else who is very popular. And I want to take a look at a couple clips because it's not just him claiming to be God and asking people to bow down to him, which is kufr and shirk, uh, and you know that would be bad enough, but he's going on platforms, uh, huge platforms with people like Michael Francis and talking about Islam and is so ignorant of Islam, is saying other things that really the lawazim or the entailments of them are kufr. Let me ask you a very interesting, because you said you believe Jesus is coming back, yeah. and yet you're Islam. So does Islam. They do. Yeah. So they believe that Jesus is the son of God. Yeah. Okay. They believe he was a messenger. They don't believe he's a son of God. I have to be, I, I, I don't want to say anything incorrect, because if I say anything incorrect, the, the Muslim world jumps all over me. But they do believe he was a messenger. They believe he was a prophet, mm -hmm. along with Muhammad and along with Moses. They believe in a lot of the same things. I guess the very simplistic way to understand or explain Islam is they believe in the Bible. They believe in all of it. They just wrote one more book afterwards by one more messenger, Muhammad, peace be upon him. And in his book, he said, Christians are right. Everything's right. But there's also this part. That's the very simplistic view of it. Mm -hmm. It's, I don't think... The problem is Islam versus Christian. I don't think the problem is God versus God. I think the main problem with the world today is godless versus believers. I think if you have somebody who believes in God, all the religions have a basic tenet of look after your family, yeah. do the right thing. God is watching. There is sin. There are some things more important than money. Michael Francis is a Christian, claims to be a born again Christian, ex-mobster, whatever. That's not really the point. He's pressing uh, Andrew Tate on his religious convictions and his religious beliefs. And rightly so, from a believer's perspective, although we think Michael's wrong, he believes what he's saying is the truth. He doesn't believe that this is just some pragmatic way of getting around society or making himself feel better or anything like that, which many times that's what it seems like when Andrew Tate speaks. But he asked him, when it comes to Islam, do you believe that Jesus is coming back? Well, Andrew Tate was right about that. Okay, check mark, we'll give him that. But then he asks him, oh, uh, but is Jesus the son of God in Islam? And initially he's kind of saying yes or very hesitant. And he says, oh, well, I don't want to say anything because people like Jake, the Muslim metaphysician, are going to jump all over me, of course. When you have that type of platform and millions of people are watching and you're claiming to be Muslim and you don't even know if in Islam we believe that Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, is a, a son of God. The Quran says in numerous ayat that the the heavens and the earth almost crumble at the very mention of claiming that Jesus, peace be upon him, is God. And you claim that you were reading the Quran in uh, prison and you've read it several times now and you don't know those verses. Nobody went and told you that we don't believe that Jesus is the son of God. You don't understand how big of a blasphemous statement this is. And you have no idea about it.
that's problematic in and of itself. And those people who claim to be around him, and you guys know who they are, some of these guys who love to, you know, make a whole bunch of controversy with regards to what's happening in Palestine, and only and many times even seem like they're anti-Palestine. I'm not even going to mention their names, but people who know who I'm speaking about. Who are you? You think you're in the Dawah? You think you've been giving these guys Dawah? You've been in Andrew Tate's ear? You didn't even give him enough Dawah to know that we in Islam don't believe that Jesus is a son of God and that's a blasphemous statement? Are you kidding me? And you think that you're in his ear and you're supporting him and you'll make a hundred excuses for him, but then one person does something differently about the issue in Palestine and you're all over them, whether it be boycotts or whatever where there may be you know, genuine dispute available. And you're all over them, but you can't say a word about Andrew Tate, your boy who's spewing kufr and shirk, who doesn't even know that Islam teaches that Jesus is not the Son of God. Are you kidding me? So we got to be watching out for these guys too. They're a bunch of jokers because their silence is deafening. Why are they so quiet at a time like this? People need to start asking those questions. Now back to Andrew Tate. Furthermore, after he didn't know that in Islam we don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God, then he says, look, let me break it down to you like this, Michael, because Michael doesn't know. This is an opportunity for Dawah, and he completely blows it. What does he say? Look, basically, this is the difference between Islam and Christianity. Islam believes in everything the Bible says. No, it doesn't. Islam says that the Bible is corrupted. Islam says that the Bible has many mistakes and errors and blasphemous statements and corrects many of those throughout the Quran. But even if he didn't know that, then he goes on to say, the only difference is it believes completely Islam teaches and the Quran teaches that we believe in the Bible completely. But then the Quran is just one extra book that was added, another revelation from the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. And in, the, in that revelation in the Quran itself, he explicitly says, oh, the Christians are right. He said this word for word, that in the Quran it says the Christians are right. They're not wrong. They don't have wrong beliefs. There's nothing that they need to be corrected on. Are you kidding? And you live in Romania, in a place where you should know the basics of Christianity. You grew up in a Christian uh, place as well. You grew up in a Christian household and family. And what? You don't know that Christianity teaches the Trinity? That tr Christianity teaches to worship Jesus, peace be upon him? That Christianity te teaches that Jesus is the Son of God? Now, I know there may be a very, very small fringe of people who don't believe that. And I had to note that in correcting Imran Hussein. Maybe he's been following Imran Hussein, uh, Andrew Tate, because many of the same things that he's saying are very similar. Oh, no, there's really nothing wrong with them. You can believe and still believe in Christianity. You don't really have to believe in the Quran. It's just an additional revelation. But be a Christian. Don't worry about it. This is not what Islam teaches. Islam teaches that they distorted the previous scriptures and the, mess and the message that the messengers brought that they worship false gods in place of the one and only true Rabb, which is not you, Andrew Tate. You're not a Lord, and you better understand that. So you completely distorted the Islamic message. That's not what Islam teaches. Islam teaches those previous scriptures and revelations were truly revealed by God and brought by prophets and messengers, and people after them distorted them to the point of idolatry, to the point of worshiping Jesus the point in believing in almost a concept of polytheism, which the Trinity leans on, right? Which I went over and had to correct Imran Hussein. So I don't understand why I have to keep doing this. How is it that Muslims don't know, somebody like Imran Hussein or Andrew Tate, that the Quran says the Christians are wrong about worshiping Jesus? That it's kufr for them. It's disbelief to worship Jesus. It's disbelief to believe in the Trinity that it is haram, it is prohibited for them to enter into Jannah and to enter into paradise in virtue of those beliefs. And again, the Quran says that if you reject, if you even hear about the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, in an authentic narration, and you reject him and you do not follow his way, you will be in the hellfire eternally. And then the Quran says what? And I keep quoting this verse because it's so powerful. Small, short, but really, that's all you need to know is this one verse, Andrew Tate, which is what? Inna ladina kafaru min ahl al-kitabi wal-mushrikina fi nari jahannam khalidina fiha 
أولئك هم شر البرية. What does it say? Indeed, those what amongst the the disbelievers, amongst the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians and the polytheists, the Mushrikeen, they are the worst of living creatures, and they will be in hell fire eternally. And in the context of the Surah, in the context of the chapter, which it's chapter 98, if you want to look it up, uh, Andrew Tate, just all you got to read is this one chapter, starts off by saying, okay, yes, there's a new prophet and messenger that is being proclaimed to the whole world, including the people of the book and the Mushrikeen. They had a chance at the beginning. Are you going to accept this genuine prophet from God or not? Then it says, now once the proof has been established, once the proof of the prophet has clearly been established upon them. If they reject him, there's only two groups of people now at that point. Do good deeds and believe, and they will be in Jannah and have uh, and be in paradise with rivers flowing, and they are the best of living creatures. Or the other group, those who reject the prophet Muhammad والسلام, and do not follow his way. <laughs> there's those on now it's a dichotomy. There's no more confusion. Once you hear the message, you hear about the Prophet, peace be upon him. You hear about the Qur'an. You hear about his revelation, what he brought. And you understand what it is, and you reject it and follow another way? That's it. And you die upon that state? You're gone now. We're not happy to say that. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide these people, including Andrew Tate. But who are these people who have been giving dawah to Andrew Tate? That didn't do enough to even explain the basic components of Islam. That when he goes on a platform like this, with a big opportunity for da'wah in front of millions of people, he blows it, says, oh yeah, the Qur'an says the Christians are right. They don't even need to really accept this. No, the Qur'an says the Christians who worship Jesus are upon kufr and are destined for hell. So this is extremely dangerous, folks. I know some people are going to get, you know, their, you know, underwear in a bunch. And they're going to say, oh, Jake, you're being too harsh. You know, he's had a difficult time. He's had a difficult life. He's been on trial. He's being accused of things he didn't commit. He was in prison. He was in the hole. How many excuses are we going to give him? How many times can he go and commit uh, and, and mention kufri or, or shirky statements publicly in front of millions of people and we just idly sit by? This is Dean. I, I hope that Andrew Tate stops spewing this blasphemous state stuff. I hope that people get in his ear who have contact with him. I don't, but those who claim that they do, instead of worrying about who's uh, protesting what and drinking where, they should be worried about the guy that they are thinking that they are in the ear of, and he's out spewing kufr and shirk, and on the same time, doesn't know the basics about Islam. So he needs to be held accountable. We need two things, transparency and accountability in the da'wah. Nobody's free from correction. And if I slip up, I hope that people come and correct me, right? And there's going to be much more, inshallah, to say about that in the future because we're working on some projects to make sure you put that in place. Because when this happens, we need to correct them. Otherwise, we look like a laughing stock. Oh, yeah, people parading around Andrew Tate. Yeah, he's a Muslim. Yeah, we, this is so great. Look what he's saying. This is nothing to be proud of to be parading him around. So, and, and, and the bigger problem is not only about Andrew Tate, it's the millions of youth potentially that he could be influencing or even those who may have eventually been interested in Islam who he's turning away from Islam. So this had to be said, whether some people are like it or not. I hope that Andrew Tate is guided. I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide him back to the straight path to stop him from this foolishness and that people will actually speak and sit down with them and tell them to calm down, man, you need to stop talking about Islam. You need to stop talking about these things publicly until you're ready, because you're, you're spewing nonsense, and you have the potential to mislead millions of people, okay? Now, uh, with that being said, guys, I want to thank you all for watching. I hope that this video has been educational. I hope that people understand the gravity of this video and why I feel that I've had to made it, make this video after such a long time. But if you enjoyed it and would like to warn people about this and people to understand how dangerous this is, for it to reach more people, both Muslims and non-Muslims alike, to clarify the true message of Islam to people, to let them know what Islam actually offers, then please share this video. 
make sure you give it a like, a thumbs up, comment on the video. It really does help with the algorithm. Share it on your social media platforms, no matter how big or how small they are, because unfortunately, people like Andrew Tate have much bigger flat platforms and are spewing this nonsense. So we have to share this video as correction to that. Let's get it out to as many people as we can to clarify what Islam actually teaches and what it doesn't, and to warn that Andrew Tate needs to slow his roll, calm down, sit down, and people need to talk to him to let him know, look, man, you can't be fooling around. This is Islam and Dean. We don't care who you are. There's a certain point where you need to be corrected and be held accountable for what you're saying. With that being said, guys, if you want to go above and beyond and support the channel, then the best way to do so as I'm doing this full time now is at the GoFundMe link, which is at the description of this video, as well as the description of my other videos. It really does help. And may Allah bless you all for those who are contributing and supporting to the channel. With that being said, guys, until next time, inshallah, hopefully under better circumstances. And once again, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide Andrew Tate back to the straight path. And I mean that with all sincerity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.